Okay, on page 86, we're going to talk about some polynomial functions and just some general characteristics before we jump into looking at polynomials of higher degrees than just um, the basic parabola or quadratic. So in your notes, it says that there are two types of functions, continuous and discontinuous functions. And then it gives you these two graphs. And these are both discontinuous. And they're discontinuous because the values for x for the domain jump right here. It jumps. And same idea here, this one has an asymptote and an asymptote both affecting the domain. So when graphs don't continuously move on, they are known as discontinuous. They are not smooth curves, and for lack of a better word, they are not smooth continuous curves. They jump, making them discontinuous. Now if we look at the next set of graphs, let me shrink this one down. We look at the next set of graphs. These two graphs are smooth and they're continuous because they keep going on and on forever without jumping values. They just keep going. There's no uh, interruption, if you will, in the domain values and the x values, so they are continuous. So now when we go on to page 87. Okay, so on page 87, um, if our textbook calls it this, but um, we're, we're, what we're going to use is called the leading coefficient test. So we're going to look at the degree and what the highest uh, degree of the polynomial along with the leading coefficient, and we're going to determine what's called the end behavior or how the two ends of the graph behave or which way they go. So number one says if the degree of the polynomial is odd, meaning the highest power on the polynomial is odd, 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, etc., then the ends travel in opposite directions. So the way that I remember this is that if my degree is odd, then the ends are opposite. Odd, opposite, go together. Okay, so let me just draw a quick little graph for you. I'm going to shrink this really quick. I want you to think about like a cubic function. We should know by now that the cubic function does one of these things. y equals x cubed. That's a cubic. It's odd. Okay. Normally, on an odd function, if the number out front is positive, and in this case it's a 1, so it's positive, that means the left side's going to go down and the right side's going to go up. But, however, if I had y equals negative x cubed, it's going to flip-flop the ends. So now my left side of the graph is going to go up, and my right side of the graph is going to go down. Which is exactly what is said right here in your notes for letters A and B. If the leading coefficient is positive, then the right side of the graph rises while the left side of the graph falls. If the leading coefficient is negative, the right side of the graph falls while the left side of the graph rises. And then there's two examples. And so I'm going to go to a new page. Okay, so we have two examples. Example, example one says that I have f of x equals x to the fifth plus x squared. So if I take a second to look at this graph, it's odd. So my ends are going to go in opposite directions. So it's either going to go up and then down, or it's going to go down and then up. Because the leading coefficient, which is this thing right here in front of the x to the fifth, because the leading coefficient is the number that's in front of the x where the highest degree occurred, or the highest power occurred, is positive, we know that the left side's going to go down and the right side's going to go up. But we can't use left side down, right side up, because that's just not mathematical, mathematically appropriate terminology. So this is what we're going to write instead. And I'm going to write above it so I can fit it in. But the problem, or the way we write this, is always going to start the same. As x approaches negative infinity, f of x is going to approach something. We always have to fill in this blank, comma. Now I'm going to I'm going to go down this line so I can keep writing. I'm going to show down arrow, and then as x approaches positive infinity, f of x approaches blank. Well, let's put our graph. So up top, x approaches negative infinity. Well, this direction right here is negative infinity. What happens to the graph? It goes down, and down is known as negative infinity. So up here, as x approaches negative infinity, f of x approaches negative infinity as well. And then as x approaches positive infinity, so as my x gets bigger, my graph gets bigger, so f of x approaches infinity. If you look at number two for a second, 
Because the leading coefficient is negative, remember the two ends are going to flip-flop, so it's going to do this. So if I write this out, x approaches negative infinity, f of x is going to approach positive infinity, and then, comma, x approaches positive infinity, f of x is going to approach negative infinity. If the degree on the polynomial is even, that means the highest power is an even number, the ends go in the same direction. So even, same. So if you look at example 3, the degree is 6, and the leading coefficient is positive. So even means, the 6 tells us that both ends go in the same direction, and the number in front of the x to the 6 is a positive 1. That positive means that both ends are going to go in the positive direction. So if I were to just kind of sketch it, I don't know what happens in between, but it's going to go up and up. So if I were to write that, let's see how small I can write, as x approaches negative infinity, f of x, so as x approaches positive infinity, f of x goes to positive infinity as well. Keep in mind, because this is even, this and this should match, so they go in the same direction. And I'm willing to bet on the next one that you can guess what happens. It's even, so the ends go in the same direction, but since the leading coefficient is negative, both ends are going to go down. So as x approaches negative infinity, f of x also goes to negative infinity. And then as x approaches positive infinity, f of x is going to go to the same direction, negative infinity in the down direction.